Good afternoon and welcome to this Uni Taster Tuesday event. My name is John. I'm here from Uni Taster Days and I'm going to be hosting this event today. And these are all about supporting students with university guidance to make sure that you go on to make really informed decisions. So whether you're watching this as an individual student considering what you're going to do at university or whether you're going to go to university or watching this as a school group, a really warm welcome to you. Today, we're going to provide an introduction to university opportunities in football coaching and development and also foundation degree pro programmes as well. And I'm delighted to be joined by Tom Howard. Tom is a lecturer at St Mary's University Twickenham, but also an academy coach with Chelsea Football Club. And also I'm joined by Adrian Salisbury. Adrian is a St Mary's project officer with the Chelsea Football Club Foundation. And we're going to provide an introduction to foundation degree programmes in football coaching and development, but also tell you a little bit more about what foundation degree programmes are and what you can expect when you study one. So without further ado, always conscious with these events that you're tuning in to hear from our excellent speakers, not from myself. Let me introduce our first speaker, that's Tom Howard. Tom is a lecturer with St Mary's University Twickenham, but also an academy coach with Chelsea Football Club to provide an introduction to foundation degree programmes. Over to you, Tom. Good afternoon, everyone. And as John's alluded to there, it will be my job before passing over to Adrian to, to introduce our foundation degree programmes at St Mary's University and just hopefully give you a, a far better insight into what you could expect if you transitioned from your college programmes onto a foundation degree at our institution. I think firstly, and perhaps most importantly, just to put a, a statistic out to you, and I think the foundation degrees and the way they are perceived sometimes is, is that in relation to undergraduate degrees, the opportunities for further employment and potentially further study are perhaps limited. And I think this statistic that we are particularly proud of at our institution at St Mary's is that after graduating from a foundation degree, our students, 98% of them, are either employed or have made the decision to transition into further study which Adrian will allude to a little bit later in terms of how that might work, moving on to a undergraduate programme. Okay, moving on to exactly what our foundation degree programmes look like at the institution. I think it's really important to give you a uh, as I've said, a deeper insight into how we teach across these programmes. And as you can see across the screen, this is in a variety of different ways and certainly doesn't mimic what you might expect to be a traditional programme when you come to university. We will still have lectures that may take place in, in larger lecture halls where one teacher is at the front and, and speaking to you as, as a large group but that certainly won't be something that is consistent and the norm for you. As you can see, there will be loads of different ways that we will interact with you. And our aim really there is to make sure that you're engaged in our programmes, but also to make sure that this process is individualised for you as a student who wants to progress into employment and potentially into further study. So on the degree programmes that I currently teach on, we're very keen to ensure that you have access to, to practical sessions, both led by us as staff, but also encourage you to, to peer teach across and, and practice some of the theories that you might be developing within your more classroom based sessions. There will also be independent learning that will be a huge part of your, your degree programme and it will be us setting tasks for you to, to maybe engage in some academic reading, but also to showcase to us that the learning that you've been able to take away from sessions and then feedback through presentations um, and, and maybe some during lecture tasks as well. There will also be the opportunity for live observations and within our, our teaching staff members we are really fortunate to have practitioners that are currently live working within elite environments and football development environments so we're very keen to utilise these contacts and those environments to ensure that you have the opportunity to bring some of your, your learning to life and see how this happens in, in an environment that is, is currently ongoing. Another big factor of our foundation degree programmes is the, is the personal tutoring that 
as an institution, we take huge pride in and it's something that we ensure with our current students is a, is a huge part of their of their journey with us. And I think it's something that all of our students, both past and present, have, have spoken about that is crucial to, to their degree. And the fact that they aren't just a number within a huge course, but they have a real close and strong bond with, with their lecturers and their peers as well is, is something that's really important. So hopefully that gives you an indication of, of what our, our learning and teaching curriculum looks like. And I think those, those three terms in the middle of your screen hopefully give you an insight into exactly what we prioritise in terms of ensuring that it's an interactive experience and that you're engaged all the way through it. And as I keep alluding to, I think the, the individualised nature of how we tailor your degree is something that we take huge pride in and something that we feel is a, a huge pull for, for our foundation degrees. Okay, moving, moving on to maybe some of the uh, more important parts of understanding what your, your degree might look like and how it might run in terms of how you enter the degree, but then also some of the assessment based protocols and what your timetable might look like. And we're, we're conscious that this is very important for for students and planning their, their lives around their, their studies. So in terms of entry requirements, it's something that as a foundation degree is far more flexible. And I know it can be an anxious time for, for students in, in their college programmes, trying to get a gauge of when exactly um, their results are coming in and exactly what results they may need to, to enter onto their first choice. I think something that we've been really fortunate with over the last few years running our programmes is that we have the flexibility to ensure that it might not only be your qualifications that you gain through your, your A-levels or potentially your BTEC, but also some of your more experiential experiences that you've had that we take into consideration when, when coming on to our foundation degrees. Another huge part of our foundation degrees is our condensed timetable. For example, at the moment, our, our newly starting level fours have scheduled lectures, seminars, practicals on a Monday and Tuesday, giving them the opportunity on Wednesday to participate in university sport, but then also the rest of the week to ensure that they maybe have the opportunity to get some experience within the field or potentially earn some, some money to ensure that the rest of their lives are, are far more suitable for, for university and to as I say, yeah, ensure that they're able to, to earn money to maybe get to places in terms of their practical experiences as well. Assessments is, I'm always conscious, is something that brings our students maybe the most anxiousness and is something that we often get asked the most questions about. I think it's a really big part of our foundation degrees is that assessment in terms of their methods are particularly varied and I think students that come onto their course are sometimes surprised by the different methods in which they're assessed. Typically we get students asking when essays are due or potentially when presentations are, are scheduled for and they are certainly part of our degree program but don't make up all of the assessment methods that we have. For this year for example our level fours are already beginning to construct vlogs, video diaries, paired assessments, practical delivery, and all of these we feel ensures that we're preparing you as students for the more interactive world that we live in and, and something that's probably only been accelerated in, in the last few, few months. So as I say, assessments, albeit will certainly be upskilling you in terms of your academic writing and your ability to present, but there'll also be loads of different assessment methods that are probably far more matched to your everyday lives and how you interact with both us as staff members, but your peers as well. I've provided a link here on the page for access to our foundation degree courses at St Mary's University. I've also included my, my email address that um, I'm more than happy to, as I say, share out and any questions that you might have as, as students, please feel free to contact me and 
more than happy to arrange a Zoom call to go through some of these details in slightly more depth as, I, as I'm conscious that um, we don't have the opportunity to, to go into exceptional depth during these presentations. But hopefully that gives you a real insight into what a foundation degree might look like at, at the university, particularly in our, our sports coaching and football coaching and development. Thank you very much, Tom. That's an excellent, uh, excellent start to this session. Really, really useful. So just to remind everyone, that's Tom Howard, who's joining us. Tom's a lecturer with St Mary's University Twickenham, but also an academy coach with Chelsea Football Club. So big thank you, Tom, for that introduction. Our next speaker is Adrian Salisbury. Adrian is a project officer who oversees the St Mary's programme at Chelsea Football Club Foundation. And Adrian's going to provide an, an introduction to the football coaching and development programme and concentrate perhaps on some of the maybe the non-academic elements of that programme and also what give us an introduction into what courses like this might look like where you are working with a particular partner. So with that, Adrian, I'll pass the floor to you, please. Thanks, John. Yeah, so as you mentioned, um, I, I work for Chelsea Football Club Foundation. My role is to oversee our relationship with St Mary's University through which our coaching and development degree programme uh, runs. Just, uh, just to sort of explain where I am in uh, and what this presentation will be based off of. We will touch on some of the stuff that we that we do specifically um, with St Mary's and, and Chelsea. However, a lot of this stuff will be repl replicable uh, in in other sort of settings where they're a partner with a degree and, and and the degree follows the sort of route of a um, of quite a, a vocational based practical based course uh, within sport. So, just one thing that. Um, a question that's definitely worth asking um, in terms of what does working in football look like? It's what hopefully um, those that, that study a, a foundation degree and potential um, third year top up programme in in football um, are probably asking. So I'm just going to reel off and I, I won't um, I won't read them all out. But so many different elements of um, that, that exist within the, the the football industry and in, in, in our element as Chelsea Football Club Foundation, the, the more community element of it. Um, I've, I've mentioned in there sort of elite coach, lots of people will, you know, will go through that process of, um, of working within community football programmes before then taking the, the step up just as a player would uh, into, into working in a more elite environment. Um, and we also touch on within the programmes uh, modules, for example, on our side, um, those, those more elite elements such as player care and talent identification as well. And what we try and do um, within Chelsea is provide work placements, which I'll touch on later that fall into a lot of these different categories that are on the screen now. Tom mentioned it slightly within uh, within his section of the um, of the presentation earlier, but in terms of what we try and, and bring, I think that a, a programme such as a football coaching degree is quite a practical based course. And whilst yes, there are academic lectures, uh, and then obviously in our circumstance, that's, um, that's the responsibility of, of St Mary's University with ourselves to to design those we try to complement that with a work placement scheme and i think that's definitely um, replicated among similar programs in order to contextualize that learning so students can hopefully see they may uh, hear different academic theories they may read certain journals and books etc and, and get the theoretical side behind them and then actually see that in practice within work placements be that observationally or also then um, try some of those academic theories in person, um, in, in practical within their workplace. And that starts to build that more deeper understanding um, to, to those academics, um, the, the academic learnings. The idea behind all of that is essentially you end up becoming more employable. Um, you, you grow in confidence, you, you get actual um, experience within the workplace, you get experience of, of exactly the industry that you want to go into. Uh, and then, then hopefully through that, you, you do become more employable. So in terms of work placement, definitely something which programmes such as this um, definitely encompass within them. And, and the way that we structure that from, from our programme is within year one, students will go on um, a, a rotation placement basis. So they will they'll undergo 50 hours of work placement. Um, we actually sub-split sub that. So 25 of those hours will be with some of our community partners, so our uh, grassroots clubs in the local area. And we feel that's really, really valuable for students to experience. Um, so whilst I'll touch on the 25 hours uh, at Chelsea in, in, in a bit, but the, um, the 25 hours within a grassroots setting provides something a little bit different um, and potentially something a little bit more, you could suggest is sort of the, the real world, I suppose. It's great being able to come to, to Cobham and, and seeing that the fantastic facilities that, that we've got on offer there. It's also a really, really good experience for students to go and see what it might look like to have to 
to break into your own shed to get the nets out and, and set them up before a session and, and whatnot. So um, we thought that's a really, really valuable experience and it definitely was for myself when I studied. Um, but, but touching on the Chelsea element, as I mentioned, um, the second 25 hours, we split that into multiple settings. So students will do, for example, four or five hours within setting one. So that might be um, in our situation, that would be a uh, our disabled football session, for example, um, which might be with children, might be with adults, um, and that they'll get experience within, within our disability provision. The setting two may then be a more mainstream football environment where um, players are within our development pathway which ends up feeding into the academy setting three may be the equivalent to that in female game um, and so on so we we try to give students uh, a really breadth of different experiences within their first year on their work placement journey the idea behind that is, is twofold really one students start to figure out what they like and what they don't like what they are um, particularly good at and what they might want to to develop um, and it also starts to shape their um, their career aspirations moving forward off of the back of that. What it also does is shapes what their second year placement might look like. So within year two of our programme, we'll undergo a 50 hour work placement within within one setting. Now, we are flexible with that. If a student actually thinks that, you know, there are there are two uh, 25 hour blocks that they might want to fall into, then we're always flexible with that. So whatever the student, um, whatever is best for the student. But um, but that's the way that we structure it in that we start to then narrow down in, in year two. And then in year three, it's the same principle of a 50 hour work placement. Uh, and we also try to, to tie in some research within that. Um, it's just worth touching on going back to the sort of foundation degree uh, pathway. So year one and two would be part of the foundation degree. Um, and then completion of that sort of unlocks you if you would like to, to go into study a third year, which would top you up to a full BSc uh, degree in our case. It may be in other institutions. It might be a, a, a Bachelor of Arts, for example, rather than science, whatever it might be. Um, on our element within year three, we we try to to tie in the, the dissertation, which may be quite a big word for some of you guys out there that haven't um, that, that aren't within the higher education um, sphere just yet. But um, a dissertation is basically a big research project that you'll do in your final year, and we try to embed that within your work placement, just so that it's um, ideally something that you're interested in for a start, and also we can help provide uh, access to to various participants' data, etc., that you might want to to do your research from. We'll skip that video there. Um, just worth really touching on the um, on the way in which we we learn, and I know that Tom Tom touched on this earlier on within his presentation. Um, within foundation degrees and, and full BSc degrees that sit within football coaching and development, there's um, there's obviously a, a real breadth of technology that's utilised within football nowadays. Most found that most degrees in in this sort of set, um, area will have technology available to them um, and, and technology that the students are able to access just to touch on a few that we utilize so coach logic is a platform that we heavily utilize um, you'll see that all, all images along the top there are related to that so top right hand side showcases coach logic's ability to um, cater for performance analysis so it's you know you can you can upload videos etc and then start to, to clip them and create different um, videos that you may then feed back to the coach um, in the middle, the middle image there is just an example of what of another function, the sort of social media function that exists within that coach logic platform. So, for example, you may deconstruct uh, a coaching session, for example, um, <laughs> or a game that you've that you've filmed um, using the, the tools that you can see on the top right. And then you might then share that with the rest of your your cohort and you know your, your peers uh, and get comments on that, such as what's happened here, um, where Marco's got some feedback from Emma Aldo in the, in the top center there. Uh, on the bottom, you'll there be able to see uh, Y Scout. That's a, a platform that um, that many clubs use throughout the industry to to access pretty much every game that's ever been played and access a number of statistics on players, etc. Um, and then on the the bottom right, you see GoPro. Um, so what we do a lot within our program is students may may attach a GoPro to their coaching session, be that on placement or outside, uh, and then utilise Coach Logic to upload that session and get feedback on it. Um, we use that technology uh, to, to do that. Other programs may use different technology, um, but I think it's definitely something which, which does exist within within similar programs. Um, you know, and it, it equips students and, and hopefully graduates, um, you know, to be able to then put on, for example, job applications. Uh, but, but yeah, actually, I've already got two years worth of experience working with uh, with the performance analysis software. You know, and that software may well be the same one that 
that, uh, that, that the organization you're applying for a job for um, utilize. Another element for us, uh, and I know that other programs will, will study across multiple campuses as well. Um, so, so for us, the primary campus for our students is St Mary's University. Um, have we do have access to the Cobham Training Ground and Stamford Bridge? We would usually um, placements take place a lot at the Cobham Training Ground, but also on top of that, we we often bring students probably once once a month, uh, once every month, six weeks or so. Uh, we'll bring them down to Cobham for some potential some academy observations or for some some guest lectures or guest speeches from from various members of, of staff at Chelsea that are based at the academy, um, not the, at the training ground. Um, and then Stamford Bridge we tend to use for assessments. So you may, for example, deliver a presentation overlooking the pitch. Um, we we formally delivered the program at. Uh, sort of more at Stamford Bridge in Cobham that was sort of timetabled in the we acted on student feedback with that and started to to ensure that actually when we go to Cobham and Stamford Bridge we make it a little bit more purposeful um, and don't just go there for a lecture that we could have had at St Mary's um, because essentially students often will reside at St Mary's and therefore there's there's a bit of cost implication and, and time implication in terms of traveling down to, to Cobham and Stamford Bridge so we really try to make it purposeful uh, and hopefully that's, that's replicated among, among other programs in the industry as well. I'm just going to leave with with this um, with this little infographic that we put together from from last year, and I think this this will showcase what what Chelsea have brought to the university program, but also what another you know what other external organisations may well bring to to other university programs that, that exist. So, for us, um, we've for example, you look just at that at that top left in terms of the guest speakers. Um, so, 34 guest lectures from Chelsea and, and 32. Um, symposium presenters. So a symposium, um, just for reference for, for those that are on the call, um, along the bottom you'll see football takeover events. They fall into the symposium category. Um, and what that is, is we um, we have typically follows a structure of there'll be a topic. So for example, you'll see their performance analysis, athletic development. We'll bring in eight guest speakers who will speak for eight minutes from the industry. Um, and that's um, live. Um, normally in person, we've transitioned that to being online during this period. Um, and, and yes, students get to hear from, from a real range of, of industry professionals. Um, so we have 32 of those presenters last year. We've already actually done one this year as well. Um, and, and yeah, 34 guest lectures from Chelsea as well. So, so lots of added value. Uh, and, I, and I think that's really, really crucial um, within the industry of football. Um, it's fair to say, if, if you come out with just a degree, um, good luck. Basically, um, you, you really need to hopefully come out with, with a degree and, and some experiences within that as well. We provide those within the work placement scheme. There's also opportunities to, to access more than that if, if the students are, are proactive and, and take up those additional opportunities. Those special guests that you can see in the middle as well, in terms of, of what we brought to Chelsea so students over last year, got access to, to Q and A's, um, so question and answer sessions with. Um, with Carlo Cudicini, with Ashley Cole, with Ruben Loftus-Cheek and, and Katie Chapman um, and, and Tori Andre Flo as well joined us. So, you know, the, those opportunities to network with those that are, that are involved in the game, um, you know, Ruben from a player perspective, having, you know, not, not too long come out of an academy setting himself. Um, and then, you know, Katie within the female game, um, Carlo Cudicini within, uh, who heads up Chelsea's loan department, Ashley Cole's an academy coach and, and Tori Andre Flo sits within Carlo's team as well. So, you know, access to those um, those people that have those experiences that, that potentially may not get access to with, you know, with, with other with other sorts of, sorts of programs. Um, so, yeah, that, that's a, a real whistle top tour, really, of, of what what we bring to the program, but equally what what another, another partner might bring to a um, to a university program. Um, and I'll just leave up my, my contact details on the screen there for, for anyone that did want to get in contact, please do contact either Tom, Tom Howard, who you heard from earlier, or, or myself, um, and we'd be more than happy to, to, to answer any questions um, that, that any prospective students might have.